Hello everyone. I can't believe we're at the end of January already. And before Kylie and I start a new prompt in February, I just want to squeeze one more project out of the mood boards. Um, before I start though, I was contacted by um, Andrea of Artie Mays, who I'm sure many of you know. Um, asking me questions about um, angel policies um, and it sort of opened up a whole can of can of worms really and I just want to discuss that with you today. Um, of course I made two master boards, this one here, that was the first one and this one here um, and it's this one that's causing the issue because of course many of you know that um, I have my master boards copied at my local printers um, so that I can use them for other projects um, and the stamping is a bit of a grey issue because um, on a couple of the websites that I have looked at um, it has said that um, you can scan and copy providing you're using stamped images for personal use and others are saying that you can't scan or use them at all. Um, and so I'm not going to be using this masterboard or any of the areas where I've got um, a stamped image. Apparently, um, it is OK for you to have a masterboard copied and then add your stamped images on top. So we're OK to do that. Um, but I just don't want to um, take the risk. And um, I just want to make you um, all aware of that. If I'd known this, of course, I would never have um, added my stamped images. I mean, it would be very easy to just, you know, add them on, on top of this and avoid um, any of this anxiety that I am now now feeling. So I just want to pass that message um, on to you. I want to make some handmade buttons today from my master board um, so that we can use them um, in junk journals and for projects going forward. So I've got this circle punch here. This is just a cheap one that I picked up from Hobbycraft. Um, they often have these um, a half price on the clearance section for a pound, one pound fifty um, maximum. Um, and I just think um, a circle punch is, is the one that I certainly use the most. Now I've got some craft card stock here and I'm just going to punch out um, a pile of circles to use as the base for my buttons. Now I also had the idea that I could punch out some hearts as well. I managed to punch three before the um, punch got completely jammed. Is there any way that I can repair this? Because these would make absolutely fabulous buttons but it isn't going to be happening today because because this is just completely jammed stuck. So if anybody knows um, how I can um, unjam this, then please do leave me a comment below. So once you've got a load of circles punched out, I've already glued a load together that are weighted down in a book and I'll show you those in a minute. But you will make life a lot easier for yourself if you can find a couple of buttons um, that are more or less the same size as the circles that you punch out. So you can see that this two hole button here is slightly smaller. Um, this one here is pretty much um, spot on. Um, but what I'm going to do um, is just press that down and I'm just going to use this button here as a template um, to make some um, marks uh, on, on the piece of whoopsie daisy, the piece of cardboard. So there we go. Um, and I'll do exactly the same um, with this one here as well. Um, so let me just um, hold, hold that in place. Of course, I'm not looking directly above this. So Mine might not be exactly in the right place, but there we go. Um, and then what you want to do, let me just um, grab a um, self-healing mat. What you want to do then is either use a pokey tool or a punch if you, if you have one. One of the punches that you use for making holes in leather belts would be absolutely ideal. I picked um, this tool here um, up from um, eBay several years ago and it was really inexpensive, you know, two or three pounds. Um, I don't even know whether they sell this particular brand anymore because I've had this for probably 10 years. I bought this for making holes in leather belts, um, but it has sort of like um, a spring action. You'll see in a minute. And I'm just going to punch myself um, a couple of holes um, using the pencil marks there as a guide. And that would just make life so much easier for myself. And what have I done with the um, four hole one that I made earlier? We'll do the same with that one there and this will hopefully save me an awful lot of time so there we go let's um, punch the other the other two they don't have to be perfect these are handmade buttons at the um, end of the day there we go 
So here's the ones um, you just saw me do a second ago. That one's a bit off, um, so I'm going to use the ones I made earlier. Um, so I'll pop those to one side. And what I want to do now is glue these um, circles together in stacks of three. Um, the paper that I've used to cut the circles out from is 300 GSM cardstock. So um, depending on the thickness or weight of your card will um, you know, determine how many circles you need to glue together. Three I think is ample so I'm just going to grab myself an old phone book so I've got my phone book here and what you want to do um, a glue stick is absolutely fine for this use any glue of your choice a dry glue in my opinion is better for this um, just because it dries quickly and doesn't warp your paper and just glue them down like this really really easy and it's easier in my opinion to punch your circles out then glue them together um, stick them in a book to weight them uh, weight them down and make sure that they're firmly um, stuck together uh, before you move on to the next stage so let's just do one more so we'll just glue the three pieces together just keep moving it around on your phone book um, just so that you don't end up in a horrible gluey gluey mess um, there we go and as I say you just need to weight those down just to make sure that they're firmly glued together so I've had mine weighted down in an old um, dictionary um, these have been in here for oh I don't know about 20 minutes half an hour something like this and um, and these are now ready for me to start working on so I just need to locate them all I think I've got three or three or four pages um, of, of these so here are my button um, stacks and these are you know nice and stiff now um, glued together nice and firmly by weighting them down in that book what I want to do before I get started is just cut the border of my photocopy here just so that I can get to more of the wonderful background when you get photocopies done um, at the um, copiers they always have a border around them um, but you know you can either use your paper trimmer or like I'm doing here just a pair of scissors and just you know cut the excess off so then it's just a case of using your circle punch again um, just to go around your page and just, you know, punch some button toppers out. And that's all it is. These are just toppers for our buttons. I want to use lots of different areas um, just to give myself some variety. My advice is don't overthink this um, because you'll just drive yourself crazy. Um, but for instance here, um, I would maybe, um, let me just have a look, I've got one of the um, templates here, I would maybe want to have one of the birds here on my button um, and so I'm just going to need to, to cut my paper accordingly so that I can actually reach that with my punch. Um, the same here, you know, I might want to have um, the birds beak and head there we go we'll cut that out um, so it's just a really good idea to have your circle punch this way round as well just so that you can see exactly um, what you're doing. So I've punched out all of my toppers and I just want to show you how I'm putting them together. Back with my handy dandy glue stick I'm just going to apply some glue to the little button stack um, again like this and then I'm just going to stick my button topper on the top get rid of um, any excess glue that um, accumulates around the edge and I'm just going to weight them um, all down to make sure that they're stuck nice and, and firmly so that's stuck down um, nice and firmly now so I just need to use my button um, template do I want to use a four or a two on this one I think I'll use a four so I'm just going to pop that on like like that um, in fact, bring um, in my um, self-healing cutting mat. Um, there we go. So I'm just going to hold that in place and I'm just going to punch down um, with this tool here. Um, I will see if I can find um, this tool on eBay or see if I can find something fairly similar because this is just absolutely brilliant. Um, and the hole that this punch is here, this is the finest tip, um, is much thinner than the or smaller than the one on my cropper dial, but they come with sort of all of these different size um, tips 
here that you just unscrew it um, and pop whatever size um, you want in. So really, really handy. Um, so there we go. Let me just move move that out of the way again. So that um, is my punched button now. I just want to ink around the edges. Let me just find, oh, here we go. Here's my, here's my sponge. So again, I'm just going to use my Memento ink. This is Espresso Truffle. I just really like um, this colour. So I'm going to ink around the edge like this. I'm going to do it on the front and the back. I just think they look more finished when you do it on the on the back um, as well. And then I'm going to reach for my treasure gold um, and just apply a little bit of treasure gold around the edge um, as well. So we just add some of that just around the edge which will just finish it off really really nicely you know me and my love affair with treasure treasure gold so here we go I can just make sure that I've got plenty around the edges which will disguise that brown cardboard as well whoops a daisy um, and there it is so here are my finished buttons. I just love the variety. I just think these are so cute. Really happy um, with these. Um, and just stacking three pieces of that cardstock together, um, I think is certainly thick enough. I don't think, um, you know, I needed to add any more than that. Um, I first saw Handmade Buttons by D of Betsy Doodle um, years and years ago. She did them in a mixed media style with some of her painty papers. And um, I'll try and find Dee's video and um, link that in the description box below because that's where the original idea for um, handmade buttons came from. Um, but these are just really, really fun to make. So I hope you've all enjoyed the projects that Kylie and I have shared with you this month. Um, just to remind you of what we've been doing, of course, we started off with the masterboards. And just to um, mention again um, the discussion that we had at the beginning of the video, if you are planning on scanning and copying your work, don't add your stamped images first. Add them on top of your copies um, if you want to. Um, so, you know, I don't want anybody getting into trouble. And also, if you are selling um, any of your work as well please do check out um, the individual company's angel policies just so that you're aware of what the legalities are I think we all assume that we can buy um, stamps and and things to use in our projects but and we're not often you know aware of um, restrictions that that go with it I mean I certainly wasn't regarding the stamped images um, so those are the master boards um, I also created, let's have a look, a couple of artist trading coins. I did this lovely postcard here. I love that. And of course, I've just added loads of extra embellishments, mainly Tim Holtz on top of um, the copy that I had done. Um, of course, I made a couple of artist trading cards um, as well with embossing powder. I just love that. And of course, my journal. Now, the journal has got these stamped images on and I just want people to know that I will be covering these up because, you know, I don't want to be breaching any guidelines. The back is absolutely fine, but I will be um, sorting out um, the cover by the next time you see it. So if anybody has any suggestions of projects that you would like to see Kylie and I share going forward, then please feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed my project today, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments section below. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, then you know, I'd certainly appreciate it if you hit that um, bell button. Um, but I'll be back next month with Kylie with a new prompt for February. Um, but until then, take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Um, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group as well in the description box below, the Mixed Media Emporium. Bye for now.